Hey everyone, today we are going to be walking through the install of the TEQ Customs glow gauges on this 01204 Tacoma. This install is going to be very straightforward um, and so we're going to walk you through it real quick. Um, the first thing that you'll want to do is note the position of your gas gauge and where your temperature gauge sits um, when the vehicle is off. Um, the speedometer and RPMs have this little um, notch here that keeps the needles from going down too far. Um, so we will need to move the needles around a little bit, but we will not be taking the needles off. Um, so you just want to make sure um, that you know where everything is supposed to sit um, prior to moving anything around. Um, just so you can confirm that everything is back in the right place um, once the new gauges are in. So the first step to removing the gauge cluster is going to be um, popping out this bottom piece right here. Um, so there is a clip on each side that goes right there. And then you can just pull that out a little bit. Um, you don't need to disconnect anything or pull it all the way out. Um, it just needs a little bit of movement so we can get this radio bezel out. Um, and to get that out, you just need to take the face and the dials off of the climate control. And that all just pops right off. And then you can gently pull the um, radio bezel out. And this is just clipped in as well. Um, just be very gentle with this because they can break if you are too rough with them um, and then that is going to give us access um, to getting the gauge bezel out um, so we'll go ahead and work on getting that out next so next we're going to need to remove this kick panel down here um, so you have four 10 millimeter bolts um, there is one there one there and then two over here and then there is one screw right here um, and then that will release this panel and you can pull that down and out of the way a little bit so next you will need to take these two screws out on top here finally um, now that you have this loose we will need to take this uh, trim off of the steering column to be able to pull this all the way out so there are there is a screw here um, you'll need the key and the ignition um, and then if you turn the wheel all the way to the other side there is a screw there too and then this trim will just pop off so once you are able to finagle that panel out um, it is a little tough to get out on this side because of the uh, duct for the air conditioning um, so just be patient um, you definitely can get it out um, the duct just goes down and in like that. So you have to pull it out at a certain angle. Um, and then it'll, it'll come out. Next, we have four screws that are holding the cluster in. Um, there are two on each side. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. And then we can take the cluster out. Once those four screws are removed, there will just be a couple of electrical connections on the back of the cluster. Go ahead and disconnect those and the whole thing will come out. And we're gonna take this over to the bench to work on. So the cluster has these little tabs like this um, that clip into these areas on the uh, back of the cluster. So you just gotta work your way around um, and take the clips off and then the whole uh, lens and bezel assembly um, will come off and then you can just set that to the side for now. All right, so we've got the gauges on the bench here. Um, so on the left the temperature panel, you're gonna have two options. Um, if you have the uh, oil temp and lights on the um, panel over here, you want to use this one. If you don't have the oil temperature light, you'll want to use this one. Um, so just match which one um, you need to the factory panel. Then we have the RPM panel, the speedometer, 
and then the um, fuel gauge. So we're gonna start on this side and just work our way to the right. Um, so first you can see there are two very small screws down in there. Um, so we're going to take those two screws off and this little black piece just slides out. Um, so we're gonna need to take that off and then we will put on the new panel and replace that. So once you have those two screws loose, uh, the little black panel um, just comes right off. So we're gonna set that to the side. Make sure you don't lose those tiny little screws. And then we are going to take our new panel here and we are going to slide it in, which it will take a little bit of finagling. I'm going to get it slid around the needle or not. So to get this panel on, the tricky thing is there are two little tabs um, right there and then one on this other side over here. And those, um, you have to slip the new panel over that. Um, so that's the, the tricky part. Uh, just take your time. And then um, if you do need to bend the um, little space where the wiring comes out up a little bit for clearance, you can definitely do that. Um, I just bent it slightly. Um, obviously don't rip on the wires or anything, um, but you can bend that out of the way a little bit if needed. So we're going to go ahead and replace the little black retainer on there. Um, and then it's just going to screw through um, both of the gauge overlays. All right, so once you've got this first panel on, we're going to move over to the RPM panel. And we are going to first remove these two little screws um, so that we can put the uh, this overlay over and then we're going to put those screws back um, to secure this panel right on here. All right, so to get this panel on, um, you can slide it over the needle um, and then right onto, and then there's this little needle retainer here. Um, and don't worry too much about getting this uh, perfectly lined up right now. Um, we're gonna go put this on the vehicle after we're done, before we put the lens of the cluster back on and just check everything, make, everything, make sure everything's lined up. Um, and then we will tighten this down for, for good. Um, so we're just going to replace these two screws just to hold this panel on here for right now. Um, once again, don't really need to worry about getting everything perfectly lined up. Um, we will do that on the vehicle uh, before we reinstall everything. All right, so we've got this panel on here now. So now we're going to move over to this panel. Um, this one is slightly more tricky because you have the odometer reset button here, um, but we can still get this on without removing this needle. Um, so you can just leave that be. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing, take these two screws out, um, and then we'll work on sliding the new one over. A quick thing to mention um, when putting these screws back in, you do not want to tighten these down too tight. Um, because you can actually mess up the lamination on the gauge panel. Um, so just tighten them down until they feel relatively snug and then leave them. Um, these are, are not going anywhere. Um, but if you tighten them down too much, you can risk uh, delaminating the um, material when the washer digs into it. Um, so just be careful about that. Uh, don't go too tight. Definitely use hand tools um, and you should be just fine. All right. So this was actually easier to get on than I thought it would be. Um, so what I did was I put the needle this way um, and then, now I'm trying to do it with one hand, and then just slide the needle over um, and then it will sit down just like that. So you want to put it over this first um, and then put the needle, slide the needle over here um, and then turn this whole overlay sideways to get it through the center hole and then just slide everything over and rotate it back. So this one uh, doesn't have any lights on the bottom or anything like that. Um, so this one should be pretty easy to get lined up before um, you put this back on the vehicle. Um, we'll check final alignment on the vehicle, um, but I'm gonna get this one lined up 
um, as good as possible, which about right there looks looks to be right on. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that, um, the two screws put down um, and this panel tightened back in. All right, so now that we've got the other panels in, we are going to go ahead and do the same thing we did over here and take out this black um, retainer with uh, the two screws once again, and then we will slide the last panel on. And once again, there are these two little guiding tabs here. Um, so you will need to slide the new panel over those. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are putting on the new panel. And then once again, we're not going to worry too much about the alignment of the pass-through lights just yet. Um, we're going to put this on the vehicle first um, and then make sure everything is lined up before we clip the lens back on. And then finally, we just need to route these out of the gauge cluster. Um, we are going to route them out of the top here. Um, there are just these two long, um, they're almost like guides. Um, they're not tabs, so they don't hold anything in. Um, so we're just going to cut a very small amount off of these. Um, just to give a little bit of space for the wires to run through the top there. Um, so we will go ahead and trim these and then we will show you um, the results of that. So once you trim a little bit off of that, um, we don't have the lens all the way on. Um, this is just for demonstration. Um, but once we put the lens on on the vehicle, we're just going to put a little bit of electrical tape over the top here um, just so that there's not any holes for dust or whatnot to get into. Um, it is inside the cabin so um, there is a lot less risk of anything getting inside than something um, outside of the vehicle. Um, but still we're just going to put a little bit of tape over top here um, just to make sure that there's uh, a lot less risk for, for anything to get inside the housing. Um, Additionally, if you wanted to, you can also just drill a small hole in the top, um, but this worked fine for us um, and it's going to, to get the job done. All right, so we are back in the vehicle and we just turned the ignition on um, just to make sure that everything is lined up before we put the um, lens back on the cluster. Um, and then also just make sure your needles are resting on these little uh, rubber stoppers and are not past them. Um, and then if you want to, you can go ahead and turn the car on all the way um, and then rev the engine a little bit, uh, let it get up to temperature and just make sure all of your gauges look fine. Um, there should be no change to any of them um, because we did not take the needles off. Um, the needles are mechanical, um, they're not really electrical, um, so you can, you know, if you, I'm sure you noticed, but if you turn the needle, it just goes back to um, the point you had it at before. Um, so go ahead and make sure everything's lined up to your liking, um, and then we will go ahead and put the lens of the cluster back on. So the last thing um, that you'll want to do before you put the gauge cluster back in the vehicle is just connect it to the inverter. Um, the inverter is this box here, and we just ran it up um, through the fuse panel um, opening down here, and then we ran it up, and then just behind this little uh, panel over here, and then we'll tuck this back uh, down here um, obviously, it's not going to stay there because that's where the air vent is, um, but you can just set that there for right now. Um, and then we will connect this into the wiring um, prior to putting everything back together. Um, but there are four um, plugs on there and then four coming out of the gauge cluster. Um, so just plug them right in. Um, it does not matter which order you plug them in. Um, they can plug into any of the four connections. So with the included um, no splice taps, we are going to connect the power and the ground in to this plug here. This was originally the dimmer. Um, it actually goes up in this section here. Um, I just pulled it down here um, to make it a little bit easier to wire in. Um, but we are going to tap the black wire, which is the ground into this white wire with a black stripe. And then we are going to tap the red wire, which is power 
into this green wire with the red stripe on it. All right, so we have these uh, taps in here. Um, to crimp it on the wire, you just use pliers and press down until it clicks. And same thing for this end, um, you just crimp it down until it clicks um, with the wire put in there and then it will tap into the wires for you. All right, so once you have the gauge cluster in and everything is working and in the right spot, you can go ahead and put this panel back on. Uh, make sure you reconnect any electrical connections over here and over here if you have them. And then you will want to put in the two screws. So next you'll want to put the trim on the steering column back and then um, this trim over here um, by the ignition cylinder um, and the clock. Uh, make sure to plug that back in as well um, if yours actually works. And then you'll want to put the trim under the kick panel over here and then finally put the climate control back um, and all of this goodies over here. Um, remember there's two clips that hold this bottom panel in um, and then this clips in and it should go back together very easy. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and don't forget to share your new gauges with us on social media. Thank you.